All right, we're back for another gray box. It's a very gray day outside, but hopefully there's something nice and bright in this box. Ooh, sodalite. All right, so sodalite is probably gonna be blue. Guessing it's gonna be a rough stone, probably not in jewelry, probably gonna be pretty heavy. Let's just open it up. Wow, that's really nice. That's pretty spectacular, isn't it? So this was not what I was expecting. I was expecting like a big piece of rough, maybe a few gemstones, but I don't think we've ever had a carved piece like this on the episode, have we? The eyes, the mane, the tail, so intricate. This is beautiful. This is sodalite, really pretty blue color. You can see some of the rough right there, different shades of blue. I see some yellow, black, maybe like an orangey color. I've seen a lot of jewelry with sodalite, but this might be one of my favorite things I've seen. Very smooth right here, kind of rough right here. That looks like that wasn't polished. I think this right here was polished. So it looks so lifelike for being made out of stone. This is an opaque stone, which means you can't see through it. But another box. Oh, okay, so this is what I thought I was gonna get originally. So this is a piece of rough sodalite. You can see different colors, different shades of blue, maybe a little orange. This is the same material. This is just polished and carved and this is rough. This looks like this came straight out of the ground. That right there, there's almost a little bit of green. Kinda looks like part of a globe. This would be a really neat science experiment or art project to carve some sodalite into like a globe. You'll see kinda like white marks in here. The white veins are actually calcite. So the name sodalite comes from sodium. It is named sodalite because of the amount of sodium actually found in the stone. I wonder if you lick it if it's gonna taste salty. It doesn't smell salty. You want to taste it? No. You guys want to taste it? No. I am not tasting it. I don't lick gemstones. So there's actually another variety of sodalite. It's called Hackmanite. It was named after the Finnish geologist Victor A. Hackman. What's interesting about Hackmanite, which is usually like a light pink to pale violet color, is that it's tenebrescent. Tenebrescence means that the color will fade when you put it in sunlight, but then when you put it back in dark, it will come back. Unfortunately, this is not tenebrescent, but it's still pretty cool to look at. And it's really cool seeing how this can go to this. You can actually find rare crystals of sodalite on Mount Vesuvius in Italy. Other more common sources are Greenland. Greenland has some of the best sodalite in the world. You can also find it in Russia, Myanmar, Brazil, Canada, Central Asia. A lot of the jewelry from sodalite is gonna be made into cabochons, which is a flat bottom stone with kind of like a polished domed top. You'll also find a lot of this in beads. The ancient Egyptians loved using sodalite in their jewelry. We've got the book here. We have our horse. Pretty cool, huh? Sorry, this little guy's left out. He's not in the book, but oh well. Mineral collectors actually love sodalite because it exhibits fluorescence, phosphorescence, and tenebrescence. So we talked about tenebrescence before. Fluorescence is actually when it glows under a certain type of light. Phosphorescence is when that glow will stay after you've taken away that certain type of light. So let's take a closer look. I want you to notice how intricate that mane is on the horse. Sodalite does kind of remind me of Earth. So amazing, all the different colors and the patterns we can see on this. We saw sodalite today in carved and roughed form. It does kind of look like earth, doesn't it? If you want to learn more about future gemstones, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below. If you have any questions, let us know. We're always happy to answer them. It's lunchtime. I'm gonna gallop away and go get myself a Diet Coke or a sodalite. Get it?